Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of Bits and Bobs and Surprises. Uh, Cousin It here is uh, helping me doing the opening and I just wanted to let you know that yes, it is a very windy day and he is in full new hair growth. Look at all those new little spikes sticking out. And I know this seems, seems a bit odd, but I just want to show you what I do every hour on the hour on a windy day for cousin it and for everybody else because my temperatures are quite high it is quite windy and anything that to help a little bit of relief to get some humidity around them is great are oh, you like that oh okay cousin it likes it yeah he's become my little orchid voice so this is what I do on the hour, every hour, when it's windy like this and very high temperatures, my humidity has dropped to 37%. We're not even halfway through the day yet. So thank you for joining me. Now let's have a look at what else has been going on. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Is, is that enough? Okay, okay, I'll stop. Busy, 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 tracking their way to the happy sap. Keep it coming. You see all these ants down here? I think they are amazing. They're busy finding their way, tracking their compadres, to do some serious harvesting of happy sap on my catacetums. So this is Cygnotus Jumbo Mickey doing quite well in the hottest part of my grow area and the ants have already found their way up to the leaves to harvest the happy sap and I'm very very pleased about that because this keeps them spot free as best as possible because I find that the happy sap leaves marks with the wind and drying out and the stickiness. It leaves marks that look like spider mites, but they're not. That is the happy sap doing it. If you don't have webbing that is small, tiny and symbolic of spider mites, then that is happy sap. So all these ants, I hope it doesn't trigger anybody. They are doing a great job. And I'm very, very happy to see them. Same thing is happening on my Jairak Kiku. More ants, less marks, less other pests. As long as they are around, you can see this one here is looking. There's one crawling, two crawling. Always on the new growths, keeping them clean. It's a beautiful harmony that nature has. I love it. Steady as she grows. Here is the lancifolium of the dried sheaths. Now the buds are coming through. There's one spike developing there. And there's another one back here. We will have a very, very strong fragrance out here in about four weeks, maybe, maybe five. So I'm very excited to see her coming back into bloom. Well, look who we have here. Still on its manky old mount from when I first got it. It's not showing me any signs of activity on the base. 
nothing at all. This is Dendrobium polyanthum or Dendrobium cretaceum. So there's nothing going on up there. It has been losing several leaves and I love the texture of these leaves. They are absolutely more fleshy, more like succulent type leaves. They're not as, not as soft and flimsy as one would expect from an, an aphyllum. So basically it's just up there. I haven't done much except water it just with plain RO water. But look what's going on here. Look at that. We're gonna get some blooms, which is awesome, awesome news. I have more than one poking out. Whoops, there we are. So there's two spikes forming. And I do believe these are spikes. I don't know this orchid well enough. It's only been with me for, well, since February of this year, 2020. That's why it's still on its old mount. I'm still watching it before I shift it over to my preferred mounting method. But doing nothing is not exactly correct. There will be blooms. So I'm really pleased about that. That's a surprise. Nice one. Here's my new growth on my Dendrobium unicum. I showed you how it started out in a previous series of bits and bobs and surprises and it's doing really well. I still don't see any roots so I'm not messing with it but I have started applying a little bit of fertilizer because what we saw in that other episode they are not kikis they're gonna be blooms and I did say in that episode that I was not going to let it bloom because I don't want this cane, which I, is snapped at the base, to exude any energy. But having said that, if it's going to go, it's going to go. And I want these blooms for one of my subscribers. So they have been allocated. And I'm looking forward to them. Despite the fact that I can't focus properly. There we go. I'm looking forward to them because at least I can dedicate them to one of my subscribers. I get to see the blooms. And if the cane is finished, it is finished. Because I now know I have backup on the top there. And that to me is fundamental. That is important. Anyway, Unicom, no keikis. We have blooms. My Talansia is about to bloom. I don't have labels for these. I bought them once because I needed some cork bark. We hadn't gotten out into the country yet to get some cork. And there were Talansias stuck on a mount. So I bought the mount and the Talansias and these are them. And then I've made my own little rig here, my white wire made little loops so that is where they are propped in and then underneath is some granite gravel to hold the stakes in to have a little display I have several of these pots with different talanzas in them but I wanted to show this one something other than an orchid and look at those striking striking colors signaling it's about to bloom. I think it's amazing. Gorgeous. In and amongst my bandaceous orchids growing in Lekka, Vanda Davenara Blue is taking shots one after the other with fresh water underneath. Suggested by Artwork and Orchids, Brian, how to train roots and he told me to put a shot glass underneath a root that I want to train. So in there we have water, anything other than the spirits. <laughs> and I keep changing out the water so it doesn't get nasty. And let's see if that root will actually go down. 
I would appreciate it because I don't want to bend that and snap it, but it's a work in process, one shot at a time. In and amongst all of my foliage here, in my prime real estate location, I also have a sheath growing in my Lelio Cattleya Dinard Blue Heaven. That's the first big, nice growth. It's now going to match the same size as the one on the left that it came with before I got it. And that was the growth I grew last year, so slightly smaller. And this time we have same growth as what it should be and a sheath. That's exciting. I hope it's not going to be a blind sheath. Fingers crossed. This is what I'm left with on Seidenfadenia mitrata spikes. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh well, as long as she's pushing roots, I don't mind. I'm letting this bloom out so that I can dedicate the blooms to someone, even though they're sparse, they're still going to be pretty. But I'm also needing a picture. So that's why I'm letting her bloom out. There is some root activity going on. It's very, very minute, but a little is better than none. So Seidenfadenia mitrata is giving me something. <laughs> Thank you so much everybody for watching. I'm gonna wrap it up here and uh, just have a look at the beautiful compilation of my epic Cattleyas. I appreciate having you here. If I've missed an orchid that you want to see, then please leave that in the comments below and I'll be happy to throw in a clip randomly without having to do a series. But thank you so much. As always, I really appreciate your time and the fact that you're watching my videos. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.